Okay, today is uh, 9th of August. Tuesday, we are going to have a weekly English medium discussion. Today also we have a fairly uh, good number of participation. So we have appointed our conventional topic for the discussion. Before going to that uh, appointed discussion, if you anyone having any suggestion, any other uh, interview reports or something, uh, we can take a few minutes and then we are going to go to the our uh, conventional topic. Mm. So this uh, is our idea from Venerable Katukurunde Jnananda. He is the person who wrote this book, The Concept and Reality. He says, Avijjabacca Sankara, have you heard about these terms? Yes. Avijjabacca Sankara, Sankara Pacca Vinyana, Vinyana Pacca Namarupa, Namarupa Pacca Salayatan, Salayatan Pacca Passa. The contact. Before is behind the screen. Only the Buddha can understand. After the passa, after the contact, normal commoners can understand what is happening and he can say, this is me. I only got the contact. But it is not the beginning. It is not the start. Uh, be- before before that, avijja, sankara, vinyana, namarupa, salayatana, passa. And therefore, if someone is that, when someone is telling the God created the world, then someone will ask, who created the God? The original creator. Uh, no answer. So now we can say Pasa, Pacha, Vedana, whatever we do, liking and desire. It has a origin is Avijja. Avijja is processing five times and then only it comes into the stage drama. It happened, I, I can see I, I contact, I have the eye contact, I have the ear contact, all the kind of thing. But uh, the Buddha is asking then what is the source of Avijja also? I am raising another question out of your question. Mm-hmm. Avijja also due to asava. Asava is a habituation. Our yeast of the in the vat, it is converting sweet into alcohol. Yeast, <clears throat> something like that. So avijja asava is another layer. So likewise, go backward. That is not relevant to commoners because commoners can start from the passer. Go ahead. But theoretically one can explain Pasa is a, a process thing. It is not the origin. That part is called uh, relevant to only the Buddha. So if you are believing Buddha, you accept Avijja Pacha, Sankara, Sankara Pacha, blah, blah, blah. But Pasa Pacha thing you can verify. That is human. That uh, Pasa is the what we have the touch of the breath, the touch of the um, leg, touch of the um, water in your bathing touch of the food in your mouth. So that is the Kayanapasana. No, if no one is having any other in the Zoom or something, we are going to take uh, start from the last session. Avasarai Bhante, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, we can Amiranj. hear. Yeah. Yes, uh, Bhante, we have received one report from this end. So we can start with, with that. Please carry on. Yes, Go ahead. Bhante. Most respected Bhante, recently, in two consecutive weeks, I reported about my experience of unconsciousness in sitting meditation. By, uh, by earlier experience, I can relate to your answers. But for now, for this time, I have the impression that the situation you were talking as a base for your answers was not the situation I was experiencing and describing. So, while you were saying, I am utterly misled, I couldn't help feeling utterly misunderstood. I report blackouts, and you talk about black hole. To only mention one example, so I feel we are talking about two very different things. I regret, and I'm saying with this, with all sincere respect I have for you, most respected Bhante. Whatever may be, I couldn't make use of your answers this time. So I proceed with the trick which I was trying out in order to overcome the difficulty with reasonable results slowly I found. Again, I feel discouraged regarding communication and therefore won't venture into a more detailed report today. Shall make a new attempt some later time. All this being 
said, still I accept that I may be utterly misled and mi simply not understand. Therefore, I appreciate further feedback. Thank you for your patience. Most respected Bhante. Please forgive. Tirwan Saranai. End of the report, Bhante. So in your report, you can see how many times you have mentioned I. As far as I is there, black hole and the... Uh, black hole, the term I mentioned is black hole, you are talking about the blackout, are two things. When there is no I, both are the same. So therefore, your this report is full of I, and therefore regret, therefore misunderstanding. So that is the way I intrude into, just like an opinion giver, like a government lawyer, come and give opinion free of charge. Ultimately, you are reinstalled I, discrimination, black hole and blackouts, and uh, you say it is two. I am telling that uh, not the black hole and blackout is uh, two different things, but as far as I centered, egocentric, is there. So I have nothing to get worried with you, uh, because if it is so, I am imposing I into myself. I, I please forgive, please remind me when I am doing that I-ness. So therefore, just give, at a time, give a discreet understanding black hole and the blackouts. Next time you see, it, it's nothing. What is to argue with? Both are the same. The language can give it us, give that space. And meditation, especially Vipassana is giving the space, system approach and the reductive approach. I really understand your regret. I really understand your uh, the situation, but it is not your thing. It's a Dhamma regret. The ra Dhamma friction, we are all in the same boat. So therefore, don't worry. Thank you very much for reporting and go back to your primary object, see the experience and try to, exp try to uh, explain the situation through your direct touch. Personal experience, there won't be any miscommunication. As far as you are depending on words, as far as depending on egotism, we are always arguing. No harm. Discussion means that. We are open to that. But don't think it is without an answer. Answer is there. It may be coming from the different sources, different source, coming from the giving the answer in the completely rad radical way. So be radical. Try to forgive and forget about this ego. Just see... Yes, whatever the black hole or blackout is something not belongs to me. That's all. We are moving forward if there are no any other such comments. No reports, but they from this second. Okay, then I would invite uh, Venerable Dhammarakki, Buddha Rakita uh, to proceed with uh, Kalavibhada Sutta. I know he's well prepared all throughout the week and uh, I am also therefore moved uh, to work with it. So we will give fair enough chance for Venerable Buddha Rakita. Most right, Before we start the main topic, I wanted to, uh, or I had a thought on the topic that um, Mr. Italy, sorry? German. Manfred mentioned. German, German. Uh, German? And um, my thought was that essentially as as soon as there's pasa of any kind, isn't it that, or even starting all the way from sankara, that all of the links are there, except for tanha and so on, necessarily? Because as soon as there's sankara, then there has to be vinyana. And as soon as there's, as long as there's vinyana, there has to be namarupa, which includes things like pasa and vedana. So um, how is it even that one can see... Uh, I, I see what you're saying, Bhante, by that um, us, we can only start from Sepasa. Um, but doesn't that kind of include everything else? That's my no, comment if you like, question. If you used to be Buddha, you can include. If you used to be a, just a commoner, you can exclude. Amen. Understand? So the Buddha can look deeper than we yeah, can. He's uh, inviting you to go in the, in the inferential way, in the rational way, so that you can include. Mm. I say it is none of my work, it's a work of Buddha, I don't mind. I am looking forward from the past, uh, you're still welcome. Right. So you can start the game with the party oration, or you can start the game with copulation. 
Those words I actually don't. Huh? I didn't understand that. So parturition is the baby is coming out. Okay. But the baby conceive in the copulation. Yeah. Legally, you are not concerned about the copulation. Mm -hmm. They are concerned about the parturition. But the, before the party duration, nine months and nine, two weeks, the process is there. It's a biological process. Legally, you are not concerned about that. People talking about the copulating male and male, female and female, male, female, they have so much of legal implications. Blood shit, bloody shit. They are doing the same thing in the evening. And when you come to the bench and become the lawyer, when you become the, the judge, talking about nonsense. They are talking about the Roman Dutch law. Buddha never gave that kind of a thing. He says everything has a cause. You have to tell for that the Buddha also the same, we also the same, theory also the same, practice also the same. We can start from the, the, the lines Buddha has made. We can go a deductive way. We can go over the inferential way. But you have to understand we can't experience it. But it is not necessary for you to experience to become an arahant. Yes. But you, if you wish to be Buddha, <laughs> then you are worrying about it. He says, no, 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 Dhammaji Hamdra is not enough, Pasa is not enough, I want to go to the Avijja, but uh, no harm. You have some characters like that. No, I was just wondering, Bhante, because I thought that... Um... I mean, you have the characters like becoming a Buddha. Right. <laughs> rather than uh, Theravada tradition of becoming enlightened, you want to be a Buddha, then you have a big plan. I mean, we must have accommodate. We, have, we must accommodate that kind of people also. But uh, we have some critical approach. They are the Mahayana fellows. I mean, they are 95% of the Buddhists. But there are some good things there also. But we are in Theravada tradition in this very life. There are no nonsense. Un uh, un unwanted thing is not... We are, they are doing it, what is prescribed, just to become enlightened. And there you may not be omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. But you, you no more go in the sansar. So for that, this recipe. But if you wanted to become Buddha and experience the same, I mean, the, the verify the same, it takes longer time for you to have paramita and everything, and you have to do the behind the screen. Be inside the bonnet of the car, not in the dashboard. So you have to go there to the engineering. You are not become, try to be a driver. To driver, the dashboard is enough. But if you wish to be an engineer, it is not a crime. You have to go. So likewise, uh, uh, last time we gave a fair chance, Patika Sampasa, Adivachana Sampasa, even the Pasa is divided into uh, origin from the materiality, origin from the mentality. Patika Sampasa means something originated from the part and partial of the, the tangible. And Adivachana Sampasa is intangible, namesake, nomenclature. So that means Pasa is not a mere Chaita Sika, it has some physical contact. It has some four dimensional concrete element. But usually in a Theravada, we accept Pasa is a pure mental concomitant. But it is not. And that is very deep. And uh, I appreciate when Banyananda on that. And there's another monk in Sri Lanka uh, coming from uh, coming from that tradition. It is also very recent one, Labunoru. Labunoru monks, they analyze. The Pasa itself is, have two roots, not the one single tap root. Two roots, Patika Sampasa, Adivachana Sampasa. And they try to explain it as much as possible through commentarial exegesis. And very, very sparkle, sparkly. And this is, I, I asked them, they came here, I asked them, have you copied it for Mirabhanyana? Because Mirabhanyana is very clearly explained it. No, 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 no. We found in the scripts. By finding that in the script itself is an innovation. People don't understand what is written in the scripts. And they found, not in the Pali canon, they found the examples in the uh, Abhidhamma or Pali commentarial part, Abhidhamma commentary, and they explained this is what the, the commentators are telling. So it is something shocking, electric. So I told I am happy to discuss with you 
because I thought very much Jnana is a genius in that sense because he explored and given us so much of things. So last week he was finding ways and means why this Sutta Nipata thing is only explained through the Samatha. Why can't we explain through the Vipassana? It is completely radical. So I am fully endowed with, enlightened with, uh, not enlightened. I am having everything because I follow Venerable Jnananda's concept and reality very clearly, concretely explained. Not the Buddha, what is the Buddha limited to the Buddha. He says the rational approach or deductive approach or inferential approach, uh, the passa backward. Whether it is verifiable or not, I leave it open. But I feel like verifiable, but the Buddha hinted, don't worry, darling, about that. Because after the party oration, enough, that part is enough for you. But he has not covered you to, don't go behind, don't go behind the screen and don't open the bonnet of the car. No. Have, am I, have I amused you and confused you? And No, no. Um, thank you. I, I was just checking because I've heard um, different opinions on these things. Uh, as to how much we can see and how much Buddhists can see in things. Uh, there is nothing we can't see. We can see theory-wise, we can see inferential-wise, we can see it uh, the, uh, the verifiable way. The seeing things in three forms in, in Theravada tradition. So we have to define. We are talking about the theoretical understanding, we are about the inferential and the, uh, the deductive understanding and uh, verifiability. Yes, and I, I agree that uh, just for practicality, um, our own experiences where we see it and having that understanding of conditionality in general. Um, yeah. That is, understand, please yes. understand, it is less than 30% of the Buddhism. Mm -hmm. About 60% inferential. Mm -hmm. And another 10-20% uh, theoretical. Yes. That uh, un disproportionate. But the whatever may be, that 30% kept first. The direct touch. So majority of people never go to the direct touch. They go for influential knowledge, so they listen to someone, analytical, and they find very lucrative, very enlightening. But they are not practicing. The speaker also not practicing. So that is why the Pandita Saito says, they give in a such a convincing talks, even the rock uh, statue will shake the head. Yes, yes, yes. That's the way missionary works people are doing. Same thing happened in the Buddhism also. So I appreciate when Vanyananda, was he being a monk practicing with us, and he explained it, so he's answerable because he's living with us. In a, in a vision, but he did a good, fair uh, try. And Buddha Dutta from uh, Thailand, he gave a fair try, and he found uh, water. A.K. Warder, also trying to give uh, some theoretically clear understanding without bias. I mean, we are very lucky. They are not problems for us. They are answers. Different answers don't conflict each other. That means you don't know how to handle it. Each and everything is an endowment. We must give a fair chance and proceed in day to day, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, left leg, right leg. And we are giving the direct touch the priority. Yeah, thought occurred whether what he says is substantiated in uh, Nalakalapa Sutta, where uh, the two Arahans say, Vijnana Pacha, Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa Pacha, Vijnana, which loops on on one hand and on the other hand, um, Nama Rupa Pacha uh, Salayatana. So in, in, in that juncture, we have two ways, so which one may be Particular sampasa, the other one will be adivachana sampasa. I'm not quite, quite, quite sure whether I'm clear enough. <laughs> That's a way of explanation, but not directly connected. Adivachana sampasa, particular sampasa, very well they explain in the Nidana Sutta and even Bhikkhu Bodhi's interpretation and Venerable Jnananda's interpretation of the four words uh, akara. Santana, Linga, Uddesa. <clears throat> Translated in four terms. Well, Jnananda's one is more familiar to us. Bhikkhu Bodhi's one is more theoretical. But still, the Buddha is giving no connection with the Aijapacha Sankara. 
Patika Sampasa, Adivachana Sampasa is different subject, the analytical part of the puzzle, the contact, the very philosophical, <coughs> very deep. But then we have to understand our machine is completely conditioned. So we never touch up and we have preconceived ideas. We have scripts in our mind. More than the touch, we get a chance to vomit what we know. Present what we know and then arguing, arguing, arguing because the other person is giving his own script. So the day we are practicing and come into the being, we too become being. That means interbeing, we are losing ourselves and we can understand communication is a hell of a job. Difficult to do it. But if we both happy, one day we can merge together where the ego is gone. We are merging. As far as we are fighting with the egocentric, ever fighting. It's also good, I mean. They should have a fight in a film. Otherwise, the film is boring. So maybe I can just add my point to it too as well. It's a kind of a, it's a, a question of like bacon, bacon and eggs. Uh, in bacon and eggs, the, 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 the chicken is involved. But in, in, in uh, bacon, the pig is there. So uh, this is the same question with Pasa. We, we know Pasa is there because the other things are arising, but we don't, we don't really get to see or experience Pasa. So it's like you, you, you eat the eggs, but you, you, you have to think that there was a chicken. So uh, I'm just, it's a kind of a it's, a, it's a witty, it's a witty difference between bacon and eggs. The, the, chicken, the chicken is involved, but the, the pig is committed. Right. What, is the, what is the religion with the bacon? Is the chicken and egg? Yeah, the, the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. So what is the relation with the pig to this story? <laughs> uh, in in Pasa, we, we we have to we have to be analytical and and think. Oh, there was Pasa. There was a chicken. Whereas with the other mental uh, concomitants, they're there. They're involved. They're present. Like the pig is present in the bacon, but the chicken is not in, in is not present in the egg. The chicken was just involved, right? Yeah. The chicken was preceding the egg, like pasta. But the bacon and the chicken, uh, 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 bacon and the pig, it's a part and parcel of the pig. That's right, but the egg isn't part the and egg, parcel of the chicken. But the chicken is, uh, give, can give the egg or not, but it's a second generation. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it, you have to think about it. It's, 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 I'm just being witty. It's, it's a pun. Not witty, you're foolish. <laughs> well, okay, I'm foolish, you are not, whatever. whatever. You, are not, uh, you are not how they call you. Uh, just, just because you didn't find the humor in it, now you want to denigrate me. Uh, Tough yeah. biscuits. So that uh, chicken and this thing is completely different. So this is a chicken, uh, this is a, chicken, a bacon and chicken question. Huh? The, 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 the pig can do this. You can see the pig is with the, the seeds, seeds of the uh, patipanua. I don't salapamas. And then the bacon also have the same salapa. <coughs> and the, if it is infested with the tapeworm, if the pig, pig is in, infested with the uh, tapeworm, the, even the bacon has the tapeworm. But the chicken and the egg... Completely two different things. Yeah, this isn't chicken and egg in that sense. This is ch this is uh, bacon and, and and egg. It's a part and part. It's a partial of uh, the pig. So chicken and the egg is completely genetically different, and uh, lineage different. So it, I think it's, that takes it, 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 It's a joke. I think you missed you missed the pun. No, no, you, it's not a joke. It's a, it's a, it's a, I, again, I'm not using the term. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's let's crack on here. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so in this this next verse, the Buddha, the psychic Buddha, pre uh, uh, presents this question to the Buddha: How must one attain for form to vanish? How do pleasure and pain also vanish? Please tell me this: How they vanish? We would like to know that. Just uh, such such is my thought. So the uh, the Buddha answers in a in a kind of like a riddle. He says, uh, "Not percipient true perception, not percipient true disturbed perception, not altogether without perception, not percipient of what has vanished. Form vanishes for one who has so attained. 
for concepts due to proliferation are based on perception. So this is a very naughty, uh, very naughty kind of um, uh, reply. And um, I was fortunate to spend a few years with Syado Kundala in Burma, and he, he liked these kind of riddles. He would give these kind of riddles, and you would you would chew over it, and um, you know you you wouldn't n- initially you know understand what the hell they were talking about. It was a bit like what I was saying earlier on. This is like a, a bacon and egg situation. And uh, it can be quite misunderstood or people argue with you about it. And then we get into this whole chicken and eggs thing. But uh, the, it's a very interesting, the role the, of how a teacher has to teach a student and kind of give you a puzzle and, and you unlock it. And for some reason, my mind likes these kind of puzzles. I, I really like these kind of things because my mind will just get stuck on it for a long time and look at it from very, you know, many, many different aspects. So like this uh, verse I've been actually looking at for the last two or three weeks. And, and I, I kind of contemplate it as I'm walking up and down. Um, I look at it from many different translations and I was trying to discuss it. I've discussed this a few times actually with Damajiva beforehand because um uh, I don't. I don't feel the uh, the the commentarial uh, description in this um, quite. It doesn't capture it from my point of view. And I thought, is it okay if I just give my perspective on it rather than the traditional perspective? Because the traditional perspective is this, that they're saying that this is describing different states of samatha, whereas um, I don't think it needs such a complicated um, kind of uh, description. So uh, I, again, um, I'm going to come back to the same verse again, the answer the Buddha is giving, but I'm going to give it from this A.K. Warders um, because he's he's just translating the Pali more based on the language itself rather than on, on the poetry and the meaning. So he says, he has no ordinary perception of perceptions. He has no deranged perception of perceptions. He is not without perception. He has no perception of what has disappeared. For one who has attained to such a state, form disappears. For that which is named diversification uh, has its origin in perception. So uh, again, uh, so I, what I want to answer it is, is that uh, is this is a verse that you can really overthink a lot, and uh, rather than just taking it for what I- exactly he's saying. So he has no uh, ordinary perception of perception. So. In this way, he, he, the ordinary perception of perceptions is a deluded perception. You, you are deluded. So uh, what the Buddha is saying here is, is that you have a kind of a slightly extraordinary perception of perceptions. You know that you, ha- you are perceiving. Most people don't know they're perceiving. They're just uh, stuck and lost in the wandering mind. Whereas this person knows that, there are, that they are perceiving things. So in this way, it's not just simply you're not stuck on form. Like the question here, the original question is, is uh, how uh, does one attain a state where form disappears? So when you know this form, then form has disappeared because actually you're just with the thought form. So you, 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 you're, you're not most people when they see something, they, they, they take that object as uh, as 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 a, a thing. Whereas in reality, it's just an impression in your mind. It's 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 um, the mind perceives something and then it it forms that into a mental state inside your mind, a mental construct within your mind. And so here he's saying, you know that you know, and when you know you know, it's no longer form. It's it's nama. It's mind. So he has no deranged perception of perceptions. Again, he's saying here, you're, you're not confused about what you're seeing. You, you know what you see. You're not deranged about it. You're not deluded about it. And, uh, you know, uh, if you meet people who are crazy, th- like th- th- they see, they perceive uh, what isn't in something as something. Like we can all agree, say, that, 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 uh, that this is just a shadow, but um, the way the light is, is landing on the ground, there's a shadow forming. Whereas for the other person, no, 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 this is a being, this is a, a ghost. You know, So they're perceiving something in the form that isn't there. Whereas the rest of us just know, oh, I, I, I know that I'm seeing like, and, and I'm not deranged about what I'm seeing. So this, this is, uh, takes a, a clarity of mind. 
So he is not without perception. So this means that um, we were talking earlier about this um, black hole and all the rest. So this is kind of like uh, talking about something like that. Like, you know that you know, and you know that you don't know. Like, there's a lot of people, like, they, they're, they're not paying attention. So they don't know because they were inattentive. Whereas this person <clears throat> in this condition knows they don't know. So they know that the thing that they're seeing isn't there anymore. And they know the, the thoughts are there or the thoughts are not there. So they're, they're, they're seeing things as they really are and as they really arise in the moment to moment. And when you watch that, you see like in the breath, there's the beginning, the middle and the end. So the breath disappears and you know the breath disappeared. So that's what he's saying here. He is not without perception, he, meaning uh, he, he, he knows that something has disappeared. And that could be the, the, the rupa or it could be the nama. The mind can disappear and the, the body can disappear. He has no perception of what has disappeared. So this is just, again, it's just what it means. It means uh, when something has disappeared, it has disappeared. He has no perception of what has disappeared. It means when something go is gone, he knows it's gone, you know, or he has no perception. I know that I don't know because it's not there. <laughs> you know, it, it's just very, it's a very logical kind of statement that he's making. It's not, it, it sounds riddleish, but it's not. It's very straightforward what he's saying. For one who, who has attained such a state, form has disappeared. So when you know what's happening like this, you're actually just inside your mind and you're at the mind sense door and you know what's happening. So you're, you're coming back to our, our eggs and, and, and bacon. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're just eating the eggs, <laughs> you, you know. You, you don't really care about the chicken anymore. It's, the chicken is not there at all. The chicken isn't involved. So you're just with what, what you're involved with. So for one who has attained to a state, such a f uh, form has disappeared. So you're no longer like uh, like out in the world. You're, you're inside your mind base and you're watching all of the mental states that are built. So like in, in, to some degree, everything is in the mind, you know. Everything is in the mind uh, because, uh, like for most people, everything is not in the mind. They're, 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 they're sort of so out in the world that they, whatever they perceive, they, they take it as real. But in reality, it's just constructed inside your mind. If you're, if you're really uh, like a Chitana Upasana yogi, everything is happening inside the mind. So you, you see something and it creates a, a corresponding thing inside your mind. And that process of its manifestation inside your mind is, is what's very interesting. Oh, I, I saw that and I perceived this from that. Whereas somebody else will go, no, 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 it's definitely this. And you, you don't realize there was a process of perception happening. So for... That which is named diversification, and he, here he calls it diversification, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi calls it proliferation. So because we don't see things clearly as they really are, we have proliferation from that. So like I mentioned about the crazy person, they, they, they see a, a shadow and then they make up a whole story about it. Whereas uh, what we have to understand is when we see things clearly as they are, we just see, oh, that, there was light, there was, there was shadow, and and there was a story being created in my mind around this shadow. So for that which is named diversification or proliferation has its origin in perception. So diversification or, or proliferation of the mind is based on perception. And perception is a whole process of perception. So again, if I come back to the commentaries, the commentaries give an idea about three different kinds of perception. So there's one perception where a little boy sees a, a, a golden metallic object. He, he doesn't know what it is, but he, he likes it. He picks it up. He brings it to his mum, and his mum looks at that and goes, oh, that's, that's very beautiful. That looks like a gold item. That looks like gold. So she, she understands that this goldy colored metal thing is maybe it's gold, you know, but she's not sure about how uh, valuable this gold is or if it's real genuine gold or not. Is it fool's gold or real gold? So she brings it to a jeweler and he te tests the gold with a touchstone in various ways. And he says, oh, this is 99 percent pure gold. This is real gold real real valuable gold, I can give you money for this. So he has expert perception. 
He has expert perception. So there's like naive perception, uh, sort of amateur perception, and then um, uh, master perception. And uh, so these are different kinds of qualities of perception. Perception has its own quality, you, you know? So, so there's people like who have an opinion. Like we all have an opinion about anything and everything. But then there's expert opinion. Like a person who has detailed study, detailed knowledge, detailed information, and they can distinguish between. And, uh, it, it, you know, so when we talk about the breath and meditation, um, a, a really experienced meditator is familiar with all kinds of aspects around the breath and the phenomena of breath and the phenomena of breathing and the phenomena of perception of the breath. And it's extremely detailed. And they've had years and years and years of, of uh, seasoning of their knowledge, of their understanding, and they've talked to different yogis about it. And every day, uh, if they're you know in a retreat center, they, they hear the reports from, we'll just say, 50 or 60 yogis. And, and, and you might say, well, what the hell are they talking about all this time? And it's, it's this kind of expert perception about the breath and expert, you know, how this is kind of unlocking knowledge and uh, developing... Um, you know, like, for instance, the breath is an excellent object to really cultivate a very deep um, experience, a very deep expertise. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a steady object. It's very repeat. It's repeating, but it's not boring, um, whereas other objects are not. You know, like sometimes I'm trying to persuade some yogis to not use certain kinds of objects because I think it's not useful. Whereas the breath is a very useful object. And if you pay a lot of attention to the breath, um, it, it becomes a gateway into the mind and an and, and, and entry into this whole realm of the mind. And uh, like you, you mentioned about earlier about perception and all of this, our pasa, like, uh, like if you're just eating eggs, you don't realize that there was a chicken. You know, you don't see the chicken, for instance, and you can't see the chicken because the chicken isn't actually there. But with with repeated, repeated, repeated kind of exposure, you start to understand, oh, there there was a cause to this effect. And uh, you start to um, develop a perception of this cause and effect re reality or relationality. And uh, like these phenomena like dependent origination, they start to emerge from the data itself. And uh, that requires like... Um, like a very special object to help guide you through to be a foundation, uh, uh, to be a reality on itself. Because once you start to go into the mind, it's all perception. It's all, it's all shadows. And you can have crazy thoughts and crazy delusionality, or you can have that the, 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 the object isn't there, the, the mind, the knowing mind isn't there. You get all of this kind of trickery happening. But when, when you take the breath as your object, and you come to this kind of a phrase, then you kind of realize, oh, hang on, look, this is just a game of, that's going on here. So this is all about, I understand perception. I'm not fooled anymore by this process of perception. And, you know, it's clear. So that's why when I came across this and I was reading about the commentaries all about these different late states of samadhi, and it's very obscure, very academic. And I'm like, that's, this isn't what they're talking about, I think, at least from my point of view, so... That's why I wanted to, uh, I wanted the uh, support of, of uh, Mahatero to, to talk about it in this way from a Vipassana viewpoint. Anyway, we'll be happy to hear what you have to say. And I will trash you. I will smash you. I will crack you down. But when I'm listening, I, I jot down a few points. And the first thing is uh, the baby finding the jewelry part and the mother understanding and the... Uh, jewelry is, and it says sanya, vinyana, panya. Sanya is the where the baby is found in something heavy at the sand garden or wherever, and then bring to the mother because it finds something interesting. And mother says, yes, yes, this is a feel like gold. I don't know how many crats. So I have to go to the, this thing. So it's a vinyana and panya. So this is the way when we are establishing something and go and recording the patent, and I am the authority, and all the kind of thing. So that is, uh, Upanishad side is very expert, and, you know, he explains very nicely how something become, concept become a reality. The child is just a concept. Mother is, ah, it is not just a concept, it's a God. 
but ultimately the exact value is by the jewelries. So likewise, sanya, vinyana, panya. And the other thing is, uh, neurologically, uh, the Joseph Goldstein, not the Joseph Goldstein, the, the Richard Davidson, he tried to understand how a perception happened and I put the person into the functional MRI scan and ask him to see a vision and giving a screen. And all of a sudden, he give a sound to see how the distraction happened and again come to the visual objects, uh, how much resilience. And the sound he recognized as a distraction or a test for mindfulness. Coming back to the visual, he understanding, yes, I am back at home, I am secure. And likewise, he understand the mechanical part, no self, the, how the neurologically they explain. And Amit Goswami see the physics of the soul. Physically, he tried to understand soul is nothing extraordinary. It is something we can explain neurologically. We can explain through the folk stories and how we built up. But he never touched the crux of the issue. He's, he's written a very nice book. And when I'm reading, I read two, three times because I am a just a, coming from the village. I have never thought about, analyzed the self in physics, physical way. He gave the name physics of the soul. And he's come very close to this point. How a material thing we perceive and come arrive at a judgment. This is a hard one, this is a corner, this is a brown color and all the kind of thing. And give some aesthetic value or linguistic value and then claim myself. But if it is not so important, I don't remember it. Whatever go to the sanya, perception, go into your memory. And within 24 hours, 50% lost. By 100 years, everything is lost. So within that, only we regurgitate, we vomit it, and make stories and fabrication. And you don't know, I know that I knew that this, that, and that, because he is coming from different culture. So his cultural value is different. So we are meeting now in the same place, different people, and talking about the sanya or the perception, talking about the rupa, uh, different things. So Bhikkhu Bodhi gave completely Jewish kind of thing, but he has a very good understanding about the commentariat. But the warder is not a monk, but he has gone through the Tripitaka and has written all the meanings and he has put up a dictionary. And what a dictionary, he gave the idea he is not aesthetical, he is not emotional, but he is a worldly, worldly meaning. But it is not this blood, he is learned. But we are Buddhist monks. We are learning for the liberation, not for PhD, not for any other thing. But we use Bhikkhu Bodhi, we use water, we use Dhamma Buddha Rakita, we use Venerable Jnananda. And I found we are, as he tried to explain, we Whenever sanya, whenever perception happens, we try to be mindful. Now I am away, I am face to face with this one. I am face to face with the breath. And I know face to face with the breath is something, and knowing very moment that I am face to face with the breath is the second thing. But these two things cannot happen in the same moment. So this is the trick. Whenever you become mindful, you cannot be aware that I am mindful. For that, you have to have a chunk of thoughts or a street of thoughts, uh, the four, four so consecutive thought moments, five so consecutive. Then you understand as I am here and now, but it's a completely new perception now for me. So that is why Mahasi Saito says, uh, if I am to use the technical term, Bhavanga Chalana, Bhavanga Upacheda, Panchadwara Vajjana. Uh, chakku vinyana chakku sampasa vottapana our stream of consciousness shaken while we are seeing hearing happens and then from the hearing consciousness seeing consciousness broken and go on to the hearing consciousness and and then we understand now I am a hearer not a seer and I see the approach is the sound is approaching me or going away. It's a female one, male one, and we we try to figure it out and then put a seal. So it takes how many thought moments to understand the sound. So likewise, understand the mindfulness. 
Because mindfulness is part and parcel in our bag. When Vajnana Kodaka readily says, it's a birthright. But we never mindful. Unless otherwise come and say, well, darling, it's the biggest merit. It's the biggest thing, be mindful. But to be aware that I am mindful. Very easy with the children. So I ask them, are you mindful? Yes, how do you know? I feel the breath. So you may be imagining, you may be hallucination, then he is thinking, no, then Bhante, when I go to the sounds and I am distracted again, when I come back to the breath, I understand with some signs. Buddha says there are four signs. Akara, Linga, Nimiti, Uddesa. Then the Buddha says, <clears throat> if this Akara, the manner, is changing, if this uh, given attribution is changing, given name is changing, and does the, do you feel the same thing in the same way? No. Thing gone. But it's a four attribution gone. Four attribution, when Vajnanandra gave different names, Bhikkhu Bodhi gave different names, so each and everything we conceived, each and everything we confirm, is not single variable number of variables and the decision we are making is so vulnerable, so volatile. And when we are talking, we try to fix it to simple, simple thing. The communication never takes place. So therefore, worry, don't worry about the you and me communication. Understand my eye and the ear communication. My mindfulness understanding and unmindful communication. It's a completely new life. You see behind the screen what is happening. And we imagine when there are two people are together, completely external communication. So when Jnana is an expert, he says limitation of the language. When we are talking, we have to be very compassionate, what he is trying to tell. If I try to argue, from morning to evening I can argue with you. Lucky enough we get one or two hours to argue, so that's no problem. Otherwise, I can declare war against Irish, Ireland. Ireland is declaring war against Sri Lanka. So in both of us being the, under the British government, and uh, you people are fool, we people are lucky, uh, both people are fool. So we, in the discussion, we must understand, each and everyone is talking with his own background. I can understand it, but I can't verify it. So likewise, this passa, the contact we have taken, lucky enough, when Jnananda dealt it very nicely, and that is the best I found. But Labunoru monks, I found, they also found exactly the same kind of revolutionary interpretation. And I thought I am very lucky, at least theoretically people are tackling something not day-to-day -day bread and butter. We are talking about the hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and uh, mechanism-wise, we all are the same. I mean, subconsciously, we perceive it exactly the same, but the interpretation-wise says, no, 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 you don't know my background, you don't know the way I am going to explain, you are always arguing, otherwise you are just accepted emotionally. So like, but uh, Carl Jung, he says, subconsciously, we all are the same. Once it comes into the consciousness, four characters Buddha depicted, and then we argue, your values are different, my values are different, but now you see the world is running such in a recession, losing all the grips. So we have to understand, our understanding no, in a, never in a recession, never in a grip. I mean, it is proliferating. These guys are about to ordain. There are four people. They are ready to ordain. There are some other people waiting. I mean, they are successful people. But they are happy. So likewise, any any bad thing happen, it has a silver line. So therefore, in the discussion, we must try to understand the other person emotionally or humanistically and his cultural background. And lucky enough, now everything put it to English. Polytech Society did a great job, but lucky, unlucky enough, no one ordained. Bhikkhu Bodhi took a upper hand. He is now interpreting again the same. Majjhima itself, he wrote 14 times. And when he came to the Anguttara Nikaya, his English was so polished. 
And he says, singular translation is very good. He can read it fairly. So I often go to him and just discuss to see different perspective. He's looking from the Jewish point of view. And now Sri Lankan and Jewish politics almost become equal. Don't look at me in the envious way. You fellows can't come up to that level. But uh, Jewish people, they underwent two world wars and uh, learn it. And they got the technology. But Sri Lanka, also, we have our irrigation technology. We, have our, we know our earth. But we completely lost. Now we are in a complete bankruptcy. But we lucky enough, we don't feel bankruptcy. You, you come today, I, I think, Mr. John? Yeah. The, these guys living in their individual cottages, and they come and ask Bhante, we are better off. If they are specifically, are there any difficulties or bankruptcy? I feel guilty because people are treating us like kings. We are meditating very freely. Then I say, it is there. I mean, the people, normally people, treat monks, whether you are meditator or not. So therefore, we are better off. Don't undermine that situation and mind your own business. Be mindful and pay back by understanding this. So I found this recession, this going back is nothing making any friction for me to understand understand or learn, teaching mindfulness to the people. So that is the, the eternal Dhamma. And whenever you come to the perception and contact, they are very philosophical. Very philosophical. That's the point where the God believers can't understand. Because they say it's an intelligent design, nothing to worry, your contact is not important, it's decided by the God, your perception is intelligent design. Now, it was the inter artificial intelligence came more than <laughs> intelligent design. But these things ever existing, and we, we, are, we are just amateur, we are just beginners, but anyway, I, I feel so happy, I feel so, because I take that treasure. I take that endowment as mine. Of course, I have not explored enough. So my whole life is for that. So therefore, uh, the, whenever this uh, Kalahavivada Sutta come into being, I told Venerable Buddha Rakita, Venerable Jnanananda's interpretation. And he, how much he quoted this uh, Kalahavivada Sutta is a crux of his team. So yesterday he was searching the book he downloaded, now he's fully armed with uh, all the book knowledge and the AK Warder and Bhikkhu Bodhi and uh, Buddha Rakita. So we are in a, in a floating, we are in an endless sea. So anyone to talk except Venerable Buddha Rakita? American? Uh, there was one thing I thought of was uh, there was a Zen story where um, one monk points to a flag and the flag's waving in the wind and uh, he says is the flag waving or is it your mind that's waving and that just came to mind from this whole talking and also all, uh, just the story of uh, the the blind men touching an elephant and they're arguing and fighting um, because they think it's something different everybody disagrees with what the elephant is so that is what in his talk he mentioned about this uh, the the parables, the, the riddles. They are brainstorming, but usual traditional way don't allow students to brainstorm. Just listen what the teacher is telling. But now today age is different. <clears throat> Each person, when you are tell something, we are bound to tell the argue the reason behind, and people believe the science. But I don't believe science. But I do believe the Buddha science, which is very viable. That's when the science borrowed it from the Buddha, but he improved it. That's okay. That they improved up to the artificial intelligence. But everything is in the Buddha's teaching and everything given in a riddle form. But the traditional Buddhism don't like it. They are telling that we t listen what we are telling. Just sit. Listen. So we are brought up with that situation. Now uh, we are brainstorming. Yes, Kanda. What's right, Sanhansi? Just on that last point, um, 
I think there's a lot of value in uh, certain uh, Westerners, especially, to learn how to just sit and listen, because otherwise, sometimes we can just kind of kind of regurgitate and puke out all of our ideas, and uh, it's not always so good. Um, so I, I appreciate the kind of come together of East and West, so that we can learn some of your values and maybe um, learn some of our brainstorming values as well. Um, but yeah, uh, as for things like language, um, I think uh, the beauty of the Dhamma is that it can kind of when the conditions are right, then like there is that kind of touch of understanding between people and between ideas. Uh, and it doesn't always happen. Like today, Bhante with the report interview, I'm not sure um, exactly what the situation was there. Um, but I've felt that as well. Sometimes when you're speaking with someone, there's just this kind of like the harmony doesn't come together, but the beauty of the Dhamma is when that does, and then you can kind of feel like you transmitted the Dhamma from them, and you can understand it. And um, and that was, the uh, I think, one of the wonders of the Lord Buddha and the way he spoke, um, and even the fact that it can be transmitted through the ages, um, on first by kind of our voice, and then by uh, palm leaves, and then by books, and we can still come to understand it. Um, and one last thing that I found very uh, nice about what Venerable Buddha Rakita said with um, when the perceptions disappear uh, I've also found that very practical because uh, it's very easy especially for the untrained mind uh, like my own that like it just constantly will just chew on something always um, even though it's long gone um, but then Sometimes when that little bit of understanding comes, that like, oh, that has actually seized, that that won't come back again, then the mind can just drop it, and it doesn't uh, doesn't have to keep um, kind of like chewing on something so bitter. Um, but <laughs> that is admittedly quite rare, uh, and the the habit is to just proliferate. But when that when that knowledge does come, that like, oh, that actually has seized, that perception has disappeared don't need to worry about it, you can just put it down, then there's this kind of piece of um, understanding. And um, that's uh, one of the most useful ones I've found. Um, so I hope to practice that more. That, that chewing is called chewing the cud, rumination. Mm. It's always chewing the past. But when the knowledge I mean, is a spark, here now, and you feel something new. So that is the way we evolve. Otherwise we are just just guinea pigs, just rabbits, another American. Uh, Avasarai Bhante, uh, thank you all for the wonderful comments, Venerable Bodhara Venerable Dhamma Vijita, and Venerable Sudhira. Um, and of uh, course, what is his name, Venerable? Sudhira. Su? No. Su? Sudhira. 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 Yeah. S-U-D-H I call just Canada <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, easier, right? American, Canada yeah. So um, I liked that comment that B- Bhante Buddharakito was saying earlier about how uh, you know, people they um, they uh, kind of just uh, I-, I believe you said something to this effect, Bhante uh, people, you know, they um uh, have like a, a thought about something, but um, they people they just get lost in their wandering mind. And you know when you see like people in the world, like and they have um, uh, they see something that they don't like or something like that. You know they maybe see like uh, something on a message board. It says like a message that they don't like. They just immediately react based on like it's it's like almost habitual. Whereas the trained mind can step back uh, with wisdom and see, you know, what's going on in my mind instead of just believing the story that your mind is telling you. So, um, yeah, that's that's definitely, um, you know, an interesting point to, to, to point out is that, you know, uh, a lot of people you'll see, they'll just see like um, something that they don't like or they'll hear something that they don't like from someone else. Maybe it's a different viewpoint, uh, 
you just brought up that story, Bunte, about the elephant, you know, the touching the elephant. They, they were like all arguing over touching the elephant. And, uh, um, yeah, people, they, they'll see or hear something and they'll just react based off of that. Like, uh, you said this, I just know that that is like something that I'm supposed to disagree with and just react off of that. Whereas someone with wisdom can step back and say, you know, that's anger going on in my mind. Like, why is the anger there rather than why is the anger present in my mind rather than why did you say something differently? It's why, why, why is the anger in my mind? Why is the ill will in my mind? You know? And so, um, that's, uh, the difference between, uh, the wisdom of, of Dhamma and, um, the, um, beliefs of commoners is, uh, you know, the, this understanding of, um, you know, if there's a ill will, say, in my mind, uh, if there's a defilement in my mind, it's this, uh, you could say this paradigm shift. It's why is that in my mind rather than why are you saying something that I don't, I don't agree with. It's why, why, why do I have these bad thoughts or ill will towards you, you know? So I thank you for the, the wonderful comments, all of you. Uh, very quickly, Avsarai Bhante, Avsarai, uh, all other Bhantes as well. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful explanation of uh, the cessation of perception. Um, one thing that came to my mind was even the cessation of perception um, has some perception in Girimananda Sutta. So it's it's not completely perception gone. Going, uh, going away or the vanish vanishing of perception itself is something that we can recognize and understand according to that sutta. Yeah, whenever the perception disrecognizes its perception, it appears like materiality, it appears like a feeling, it appears like a perception itself is disrecognized and volitional and the, I mean, the consciousness. All five become when the consciousness is recognized itself. Whenever disclaim it, Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, all are the same. Uh, you and me the same. The law of principle is happening. We are not self-centered. We can just share. So that's the world for children. That's the world basically in the dreams. That's the world in drama. We, re- we disrecognize, we disclaim our normal life and we enter into that role model, uh, role play. Uh, you entertain. So it is uh, the, the Buddha's whole life is a dream. Whole life is, is a drama. And he used the tactic, whatever may be, to teach others, but we try to te- learn the Buddha through that tactic. Like he's omniscient. He's not gone by the face value, as you try to mention. He regurgitate and see, why should my mind become angry? Why should it become... So he can talk about the universal mind. German, no idea? You are happy to comment? No. John. Are you happy to recognize yourself? Is it okay to express yourself in the common discussion? He's from the embassy, so I have to ask specific questions. Uh, he's, he's happy to give some more comments. Avasarai, uh, Venerable Sangha, and uh, Venerable Pasakas. Um, as to what uh, Sumana also said, uh, something, some useful kind of things that I learned from uh, other monks as well is that uh, kind of like you said to when when that anger comes and things and asking the question rather like why is it angry rather than like why is that thing like that which causes me to be angry um, it kind of reminds me of this principle that I learned of um, learning to see like the underlying tendency of things and how that basically as long as like one has anger it will find something to be angry about <laughs> and look at that like actual habit rather than like the object and trying to fix that in some way because uh, greed will always try to find something to be greedy about anger will always try to be find something to be angry about delusion will always try to find something to be confused about and these are just our defilements so um, I have found that uh, useful in like kind of contemplating um, when these things come up so that is how the animation came into being they are angry with the clouds. They are angry with the big trees. And they think they have soul. 
or angry with, I am foolish. And like you attribute the soul into the animation mood or you into yourself. So that is how the history made. That is how the storytelling. Everything happens so very interesting. When you go deep, deep, deep into the self, uh, the perception becomes no perception. You are exposed to the universal consciousness, cosmic library. Everything is there. When you become self-centered, you are a physicist, you are a musician, you are an artist. That's how it becomes. So the bell is going. Thank you very much for the participation. We'll be meeting again in the next uh, Tuesday.